What up, this is Kyron Satori Davidson with Street Lord Radio with the first episode of Off the Six. We got my man's Tay B here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tay B, we're going to uh, kind of talk about your past, your little journey through hip hop, uh, yeah. up through growing up and everything else. How you got to this point where you at in your career? Okay. All right, let's start off, man. What, um, what part of town are you from? West Side, Seven Mile. Hardwell, to be exact. Hardwell. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about like your upbringing, man. What, what was that like? What'd you do? What'd you listen to? Uh, what I listened to when mm-hmm. I was younger? Yeah, like some of your favorite artists. Mm-hmm. Just about your childhood a little bit. Man, it was just really, I was listening to like whatever was in, mm-hmm. like as a kid, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like just whatever was in, Bow Wow, whatever was like popping at the time. But when I got, started getting a little older and really care about music, like I'm just listening to anything my pops listened to. I grew up listening to a lot of like rock bottom because he was listening to that. You feel That's me? What's up. Like, so that and what else? He like old school. Like he was listening to like R and B, like Jay Z, shit like that. So whatever. That's dope. What uh, artists, either locally or nationally, you think played the biggest role? Like what? Who, who inspired you when you you at that age when you was growing up? See, I don't really like 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 I said. I listen to all different kind of music. I mm-hmm. just like. I like certain artists for like the way they move. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I be liking that, like, like the way like, like Hove, like the way he move, mm-hmm. like smooth cat, like that's like how I am. Feel me? Like, so I be liking that, like the music. I just be like different music for different feelings and all that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no really like. I ain't had like too much of a big, big inspiration on music. Just I just like how certain artists move. Take notes on that. Gotcha. Yeah. Feeling that. Uh, what high school did you go to in Detroit? I went to five high schools. Five, five high schools. I can't. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I kept, it kept, it kept like moving and uh-huh. shit was happening. You feel me? Like my old, like I started off in ninth, ninth grade. My old dude went to jail, so I had to leave from. A, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I went to five different high schools though. So it was moving. It wasn't because you was beating, beating, it wasn't. beating nah, people up nah, and getting nah. moved. And my mama, when I moved back with my, because I always stayed with my mama. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like. So um, when I was able to, when I moved back with her for mm-hmm. high school or whatever, she let me pick what school I want to go to. Like, what school did you end up graduating from? Oak Park. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. I don't. I only went to Oak Park for like sixty days though. So you were just there <laughs> for the half of the half of the half of the semester. Man, not even that. <laughs> like I was only there for just like a little bit of time because uh-huh. my my people had moved to Atlanta, so I had to move back again. Oh, well, you feel me, son? Yeah, I got you, I got you. Now, when did you start rapping? When I was 12. 12? That's the first time I ever went to the studio, I was 12. Oh, I was looking to the studio? My pops. Oh, wait, wait, you remember what studio it was? Uh, White Mike. Mm-hmm. He an engineer, so yeah. Tom Tom, it was, uh, I think that's where Tom Tom was recording, like, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So we, his name was White Mike, that's when I started recording with him. Got you. So when you went in, had you already been writing, or he just took you like, hey, you, you know, I know you in the music. Let me show you a real studio. No, see, he just honestly, I was chilling at the crib at my at my mama's house. He just randomly called me like, "What you doing, son? You want to go to the studio?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, come on." But mm-hmm. see, he the type he played too much, so like he was booking studio sessions for his friends just to laugh at him. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because <laughs> you know, so like he's probably that. doing he's probably doing that. To me, and not, you know what I'm saying? It just turned out good for me. Right. Yeah. So when you went, did you just observe? Did you get behind the mic? Oh, this is like, your first time. You're 12. Yeah, I'm 12. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I rap. I rapped off the um, Stunt Like My Daddy beat, the Lil Wayne. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wrote my own verse, everything, went to the studio, did mm-hmm. it in one take. Like, you feel me? I, I yeah. thought I was a, a man then. I you bet. Me? But What was your um, first rap name? Because, you know, everybody, a lot of artists go through that goofy stage. Lil Tate. Rap. Lil Tay? Lil Tay. Okay, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. I thought you were going to hit me with, I was the ultra magnetic. <laughs> <to> the <laughs> no, uh, uh, uh. For sure. No, that's, I, I like that. That's what's For up. Sure. So, at what point, all right, you're 12 years old, first time in the studio, then lit a fire up on you. So now you at the crib, and you got the pen and a notebook? Yeah, and I'm writing a little bit. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, just a little bit. I remember one time in eighth grade before we graduated, like, it was like towards the end of the year. My teachers like stop class and let me play my music in the classroom. Oh shit! I bet you feel like the man. Yeah, I was, I was hard. <laughs> I'm like, what? My own, my teacher, my math teacher. I remember. I'm like, that was crazy. But 
Now, at what point did he, because you, what year did you graduate? 2013. 2013. So, yeah. when you graduated, it was like, all bets on music, or did you like, or did you not still for certain you wanted to take it seriously yet? Or where, See, where was you when at? I was, when I graduated, I was 17. I graduated a little early. So, mm-hmm. when I, after when I turned 18, that's when I really, really started, like, trying to take it serious. Mm-hmm. You know? like, it's just like, I always took music, see, I always wrote music, like, mm. feel me, all through high school, it's just like, like when you're young and you ain't got no money like that, you ain't really got the abilities to go to the studio, because it costs, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no doubt. So that's really what it was, man. When I was able to, like, eventually get, like, a solid studio to go to and all that, able to pay for it, then I was really locked in, you know, started making money off of it mm. and stuff like that, and that was it, that's it. What was the first song that really got you popping, like, like when... You when you knew you had some fire and then you got that feedback from the public and the listeners. Um, this song called Back to Back. That's probably my my first like banger. Got you. What yeah. year was that? Now probably like twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah. So you spent twenty thirteen, twenty four years just building and grinding. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't dropped my first tape to probably like I just graduated twenty thirteen. I mm-hmm. probably dropped my first tape probably like 2016. That's tight. That's patience. Yeah. I mean, did you, because, you know, most artists these days, especially on that come up on their journey, mm-hmm. they feel the need to just jump on that diving board like yeah. that. You know what I mean? The minute they they got, I don't know, 10 loose sleeve sheets or an iPhone for the rhymes, like, oh, here gonna be, <clears throat> here mm-hmm. gonna be a tape. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what What do you owe that patience to? That's maturity, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, Sit down for three years to say sure. and just, Take it slow, grind, push it. Yeah, honestly, I'm my biggest critic. So like, most of the time, I think my shit weak. Mm-hmm. I be, so like, when I was younger, like I'm like, man, this shit weak. This shit weak. Mm-hmm. Even I don't care if everybody around me like it's hard. But if I don't feel it, I don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? So that was really just me, like just working hard to the point. I'm like, damn, like, and now I, I believe that this shit's weak myself mm-hmm. in this time. You know, like just before my last tape just dropped, it took me two years. To put a tape out. I always had to drop the banger though, keep me, keep my name. You know right. what I'm saying? But like to keep your name in the streets. Bingo. But like, now nah, like, it's crazy. Like that it show I worked two years for the tape though. It's a it's a, it's a no skipper. So like that first one, when you're doing these long stretches of recording, like uh, specifically that first tape, does that mean uh is it you reach back like from the first stages of recording that project, or does the majority of material come from later on? You know what I'm saying? Like was it stuff that came from like just 2015 or did you, you actually had cuts on that you recorded in 2013? Uh, on, the, on, on the first one. On the first one? Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's like, it's through like a period of, you know, a period of time. Mm. You feel me? So like, that's all it'd it be. And I'd be just trying to make sure like the album flow. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's what he like, that's what I'd be big into, like making sure you, I, you could just play it, press play and that's it, just listen rather than skipping it. You feel me? Gotcha. What's your recording process like? Do you write still? Or do you just punch them in? Or do you do you hit a beat and catch the yeah. vibe? Or do you come in there with like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm gonna come in there. And I got this song yeah. on my head. I'm gonna do this, this, yeah. and that. So like, I got like two different ways. Mm-hmm. See, I used to write. Now I'm probably about to start back. Like my next uh, album, I might write it. You hear me? But like, what I do? Well, the first way, I just listen to the beat. Mm-hmm. I go in the studio. If I like the beat, I get a cadence for the song. So I mumble the cadence. Then mm-hmm. I try hear what I'm trying to mump. Then that song come out like that. Then I just like the other way. I just punch in. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So you let the beat kind of talk to you first. I let it talk. I let it talk for sure. Gotcha. Now you spoke on this a, a little while ago. Your pops was incarcerated. Yeah. For how long? Like nine years. Did that affect you? How did that affect you? You know, growing up and and in your music. Did that come out yeah, of your music? Yeah, it came out of my music for sure. Mm-hmm. It's like. He was in jail, but like he, he, he the type of person like he always still trying like make his presence. But even he wasn't physically, but mm-hmm. still talk to him every day. But it's still like as a kid it affected because like the time he went away, I was thirteen. Feel me? He mm-hmm. went away for the majority of the most important years. So like, yeah, I was really years. yeah, like and that's like my best friend type shit. So mm-hmm. it's like I'm closer to him than anybody. So it's like I ain't, it's like it was like I was like on some solo shit in the world, felt like, you feel me? But still cool though. 
Hell to Got you. What role has he played, like, since he's been out as far as um, with your music, like, as far as supporting you, embracing it? Just give yeah. me a little insight about that. He support fully. He's, he believe in me more than I believe in me. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, he, like, he, like, the way the pedals, too, he put me on, like, it's crazy. Like, I'm better than everybody in the world but Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> but know, that's his, so Tupac is his GOAT? Yeah, that's his GOAT. <laughs> that's For what's sure. up. For sure. But, yeah, he definitely, like, Definitely like one of the guys. Like he, that's what's up. And so, your first project was AFLN. <laughs> yeah, basically. No, no. Honestly, my first project is wasn't AFLN. My first okay, project right. was called uh, Minute at the Midnight. So my birthday twelve oh one. So I just named it Minute at the Midnight. Dropped it on my birthday. But that was yeah. that was the twenty sixteen. Yeah, the, it's on SoundCloud. Uh, my first you. tape that mm. I put like, but most people know it's the AFLN. Sure. Right. So for sure. Was that which which project do you think uh either is your most important or that, you know, or it made the biggest statement for you? The one I just dropped. The newest one? Most important? Most important? Yeah. Probably gotta be the my baby because that was my first one. But like that like the one that got me the most nor uh reality and mm -hmm. all that is mm -hmm. the last one I just dropped, for sure. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. That was That's super what's up. Big, super Let's talk about El Cool Tay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like it. I listen to the whole thing. I thought yeah, sure. number one, I like concept albums and I yeah. like uh people not necessarily afraid to kind of deviate from doing something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was that Joe's idea? Was that Pop's yeah. idea? Because he yeah, from my uh, era. Uh, I'm 46. See, <laughs> you know that's one thing about him. He be trying to give me ideas and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, nah, I don't like it. Nah, nah. <laughs> he be pissed. <laughs> but uh that was my idea, you know, uh, Babyface Ray. Mm. That's what he he called me. That he called me LL. Mm. Like, he feel me, so he like that's like his name for me. Mm. So I make a lot of songs for the girls. Mm. You feel me? So mm. like that's like my thing. So what I did, I'm like, man, I'm gonna make a tape. I'm gonna call it LL Cool Tape. I'm gonna rap all this player shit. This whole <laughs> album. Feel me, little EP. I'm gonna drop another LL Cool Tape <laughs> for sure. No, that was dope. I liked it. Like I guess I like the artwork on the front. That yeah, was, that was yeah. different. I can't think I of got that from um, one of his album covers. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of nobody else that's the kind of went in that direction for, for a whole sure. tape. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. and while we in the music, man, I'm gonna go through because I, I went through for the most part the whole catalog. Mm -hmm. and I like the music bad. So, a couple bars, I, uh, a couple songs and bars stuck mm -hmm. out. Uh, Cheat code from um, Off Pioneer Tape. Mm -hmm. Read the bars. Uh, used to be great 20s, yeah, that's kryptonite. You in the club with no ice, trying to pick a fight. Me and that bitch throwing ones like his wedding oh, rice. Yeah. I fucks with that. <laughs> Hell all right, what's up? Yeah, that was nice, man. What's up, what's in fact, up? I, I, I honestly, um, as I went as I went through that, that Pioneer tape might might be my personal favorite. For sure. You know, For even sure. going off um, Laughter was another mm -hmm. one. Yeah. You know, my my pops came home and seven figures like that like that cooking nigga. My yeah. last name should be ball like that hooper nigga. Yeah. And when you play with gold birds, you're still getting whoopings. He thought his bitch was kidnapped, but now nah, I just took her. Yeah. Nigga, you can't beef with me, you still got a curfew. I came up off the white I feel like I'm Virgil. Yeah. I fucks with it. That was heat. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. What uh went into you what, what went into that particular tape? Man, I just felt like like I was just like I feel like we were, I was one of the pioneers of this shit, man. Like one of them balls, you know what I'm saying? That's for real. That's really what it was. Like, so like that's why I made the cover like it was like my feet in snow. Mm -hmm. But basically like people just, you know what I'm saying? Like on the pioneer side, they trying to, you know what I'm saying, walk, you know what I'm saying, do the same thing I do. I got you. Little shit like that. But that's what it really was. Like, I just felt like I'm a pioneer. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like, you know what I'm saying? I feel that. I feel that. Even though you're still relatively new, you feel like you're the pioneer? I feel like I'm <laughs> one of the pioneers for the young niggas. I got you. New pioneer. New pioneers for shit show. I got you. That's just, you know, mm -hmm. everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's different le levels to like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. shit. No, I can respect it. Now, forever in my bag, I did, you had some gems on there too. You know, Money Different, yes. one of my favorites. Uh, I coach a team, we gonna win. I'm like Phil. We ain't had no fucking football practice when we drill. Yeah. Um, I fucked with Up, yes, liked man. Up a lot. Up we ain't playing up. golf, but I just put a hole in one last year. I spent damn near meal yeah, up in the Golden Sun. Yeah. Huh, I'm the chosen one. Wait, wait, I'm the frozen one. 
with that a lot. Yeah. I fuck with that a lot, man. Sure. Uh, last one. one. This one, man, was funny because in my plans. Yeah. That's kind of like a serious song because mm-hmm. you're talking about some serious shit with, mm-hmm. you know, like betrayal and trust and other niggas hating on you. But at the same time, the line, bitch, it's because of how dirty you ain't in the trap. Yeah. You know, I damn near fell out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but this so, Cause motherfuckers be thinking that like, hey, I'm in a trap, man. You know, your house your is house right. This is where you lay your head. At, it's dirty you just need there. to clean up. That's this not is not your trap. trap. Yeah, that's just a dirty house. That shit. You ain't I, doing no trap in there, man. I, I I I literally cracked the fuck up when I heard that. I'm like, that's what he said. <laughs> How do you uh from 20 even though man 2016 wasn't that long ago. I go back to 2013. Ten yeah. years since you started. Bingo. How do you feel you've grown as a man and as an artist since then? Man, tremendously. I came a lot, like, in all aspects, too, like, smart, smarter, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, just know it, because I made mistakes, too, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I made, like, mistakes, like, with my music and certain things that I didn't like, you know what I'm saying? So I just learned from all that, and, you know what I'm saying? Just can keep continuing to grow, you know what I'm saying? I got to, I feel like I got way more room to improve, you know? So, gotcha. What parts of your mic game that you want to, or not bars, but just what, what or your content, rapping, mm-hmm. or your music period that you want to grow in, that you, you're trying to like raise the bar on? Mm-hmm. Any, anyone in particular? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I'm always working and working on my craft, though. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's just be like, I be working not, and not even knowing that I'm sharpening my skills. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's normal. Like, just super normal. Like it's just that's what I be doing anyway. So gotcha. I don't really know. What do you what was the what's been the hardest part of your journey this far? Like what was like maybe the biggest obstacles or the the, the biggest part that you had to fight through? Mm-hmm. See it really it really you know like by the time like I really started buzzing, like the city was getting not uh, noticed like a little bit like more out of the regular surrounding areas that mm-hmm. people listen to Detroit music, you know. So not like it really went. It wasn't really like super hard, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because once like somebody out of town or whoever they hear, it, they don't like, it, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, you know. So that's really it. Really wasn't like it ain't really been hard. Really kind of been easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's honest though. Kind of that's honest. Easy, like yeah, sure. you know, what I mean, that's honest. It's not like you're up here like, yeah. man, I put. At gas stations begging people uh, with headphones uh, listening to my uh, shit. Uh, nah, <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> that's what's that's honest though. It's to ease on. Right. I just be chill. Like, I'm just so much of a chill person. Like, mm-hmm. just be like, I'm really not, I'm doing music for people, but it, honestly, it's like a personal, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it was up to me, like, I'm just so like an introvert, I wouldn't even put it out. Like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, people be on my ass about that. But I'd be like, just give me some time, you hear me? Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. it. Sure. All right, 2021, uh, you signed to Columbia. Yeah. Okay. Are you now? Nah, also saw a thing last. You signed the Giant mm-hmm. last year. All right. Let's oh, that go. was. Oh yeah, that was last year. Dang. All right, let's go back. You went to Columbia. How'd that come about? Um, Roddy Rich, his uh, the guy he signed to Bird, mm-hmm. he linked me with them. You know what I'm saying? And okay. They had signed me, but it was during the pandemic, like. You know what I'm saying? So everything was just like messed up. I'm kind of even mad I did it, but I'm it, it worked out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I I I, I got I only did one song under them. One song? Just what song was that? Song. Uh, me and Lil Durk stash Bus. Okay. I only okay. gave them one song. Mm-hmm. And that's a hell of a song, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to get them three albums. Oh, okay. So, like, I gave, didn't even pay for that. Like, all my features, like, a label mm-hmm. never paid for none of my features. Damn. So, the best yeah. thing that came out of it was you got the giant. <laughs> yeah, the giant. Yeah, you feel me? That was the best thing. For right. Sure. For I sure. got you. Because they, they, they bought business. Oh, okay. They oh, business, okay. For sure. So, it's, it's, it's been a, a lot, a lot, a big change between yeah. being with Columbia. 100%. Like, with giant, like, they... They got the right people over there for sure. Like, I only dropped two songs with them so far. Mm-hmm. It's going, they got, it's going crazy. It's going crazy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm about to drop a, um, a, a deluxe and then I'm about to drop a, a album. I got Lil Baby Executive producing the album. 
Little baby, executive producer. He gonna executive. You know he. Ain't, that's like this is first time ever doing this. How did that come about? Give me the uh, the backstory with that. That's just like, that's just my guy. Like, you <laughs> feel me? Like he just, yeah. it's just he fuck with me. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So like, you know that's really that's really it. You know me and him did a song. Mm-hmm. We and him got a song called Rich All My Life, and we just been locked in ever since we did the song. Like. He ain't, he ain't even type to like really kick with people. He like really fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So he executive produced the project that's coming out. He was. This, I might drop that in like April. Okay. Yeah. It's a song. It's a whole. It's a whole body of work. It's a whole body of work. Yeah. That's dope. That's, gonna that's be dope. Big. Between the debacle of Columbia and going to a uh, giant, what anything you learned about the business that you think people don't talk enough about? Because mm. I'm sure it's you've a seen lot. a lot of. You know it's what I mean? Lot, man. Yeah. Like, it's Anything in particular man. you want to speak on? Just like make sure when you when you sign when you signing, mm-hmm. it's like what they gonna do. They first of all, they most of the time they not really gonna they not really believe. It. They gonna give you some money, mm-hmm. and they gonna they giving you some money just in case it do work. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you feel mm-hmm. me? Like so when you get into a situation, you gotta make sure it's genuine. Mm-hmm. Make sure they really, really believe in you. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And the, your team, like, make sure you go meet your team and like every single person on your team, because these are the people that's gonna have to fight for you with these, with these higher up people to get everything approved. Because when you dealing with a label, it's all about getting shit approved. Mm-hmm. So when you say team, you mean like the, the you marketing need to, person? You need to listen, your know, marketing person, whoever your A and R's is, mm-hmm. the person that's ahead of book like uh, like everything like literally like i know everybody on my team like i guess like it's like 12 people on my team damn. we all in the group text damn yeah like For real? people that run the socials you got people that run this you got people that run this i guess so, so i guess so who's the guy that you said left columbia and went to giant and tubby. Kind of hmm? tubby tubby yeah tubby. so i'm assuming he the leader in the group chat or the the point yeah. guard yeah like tubby just like he just basically like Say yes, yes and no to whatever. I got you. For, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He just, because he, like, I think he one of the owners of the label. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, he, um, that's that's his job. The team is the people that really work for real. Gotcha. Tubby, he worked with a lot of people, though. Cardi B, Roddy Rich. Mm-hmm. That's, he managed them. But he fucked with you for real, though. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. That's what's up. I like to hear that. Yeah, All right, couple songs. Give me the uh, backstory. How did Stash Box come about with Lil Dirt? I'm real cool with uh, his DJ, DJ okay. Benz. Mm-hmm. You feel me, like so, like that's he just really like linked us with that. Like, okay. Me and Dirk, we just been like in from that. Gotcha. How did um Axe come about with a boogie? Um, you see, it, it be like uh, most of the time, like it be like, like when I know, when I when I know them, like mm-hmm. I just be. Just know, like, or been around them, and motherfuckers already know. I'm like, shit, let's do, let's work. They mean, like, they with it. So I know one of his homeboys, Bubba, mm. and that's how that shit came about. Like, homeboy Bubba, his name Bubba. Bubba, Bubba. Yeah, Bubba. Yeah, I said, yeah, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's what's up. Yeah. Nah, uh, past summer, I saw Detroit Dreams. Yeah. Out of New <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. No, it was cool. Hey, man, that that uh that premiere was was crazy. That premiere was insane. That premiere was crazy. That it was shit. insane. I thought it was gonna shut what we're down. Yeah, you know damn near shut it. Yeah, I, 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 fact, was big. <clears throat> I was I was out there fighting with everybody else when you pulled up, and I had my little press thing, and I was getting shoved around. I'm yeah, like, what the hell? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> How was that? Is that your first uh, film? Yeah, yeah. It was it was nice. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna. Lie, I didn't want to do it at first. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, I'm gonna be in a movie about me being a rapper and I am a rapper. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't like it, man. Like it. Yeah, you was the main character of the movie essentially. Yeah. You so, yeah. You know, it wasn't like you was in it for a couple shots, a yeah, couple scenes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm like, man. <laughs> then I was like, one of the scenes, they like, I got it. They like, you gotta perform at uh, Summer Jams, but you can't wear no jewelry because you ain't gotta. I say, man, I'm like, I'm a real rapper in real life, and this really my performance at Summer Jam. How I'm gonna do this shit? I'm like, man, yuck. but I ended up really liking it. Though. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, man, that, I'm like, that's a real good. I want to do another movie. I hope we come out with a part two. I think we supposed to. Oh really? Yeah. 
It's That'd about, be dope. I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was well shot, well executed. Definitely. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. familiar themes, but you know, a good movie is a good movie. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? So I, I, I fucked with it. Hundred percent. All right, down to the home run stretch, man. Uh, what's the biggest misconception you think people have about you? Uh, they think I'm like. People don't know how I really act. Mm. That's the thing. Like, they, they really got this perception of me. Like, I don't know. They think I'm just like mean. Mm. So you feel me? Like, mm. <laughs> people just don't know how I really act. That's that's really the thing. Like, people knew how I really act. They ain't really, I'm gonna start letting people see that though. That's my fault though. You feel me? Like, I don't really put enough out there in the world to let them know how I really am. Cause I'm the type of person that like, you gotta really like. I gotta really fuck with you and just know you for me to act myself. Right. But like you said, you're naturally an introvert. Bingo. So you ain't Chill. the one that go. Yeah, I gotta get out of this shit. You think, you want to talk about getting out of it. You think uh, it'd be better if your career, if you share more, or yeah. does the mystique of yeah. keeping everything close to the vest work in your favor as well? Yeah, yeah, no. It, mm -hmm. it definitely it help it because, like, you know, sometimes people don't even be like it. It's, I know people that don't even really, like, they wouldn't even probably like some people's music. They fall in love with the person, mm -hmm. you know, and the way they act. So that'd be, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, it, at work, it's good. You know, so. Yeah, and then there's the opposite. There's people that, they, their IG antics and, and posts is 10 times more popular than their music. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. There's a lot of that. You got them right. <laughs> I, mean, I see that a lot, for sure. So, you know what happens. Uh, who's the better hooper? You, Baby Money, Skiller Baby, or Sada Baby? And I'm asking this because all y'all at some point talk about y'all game on the internet. I mean, at some point, basketball comes up. So somebody I, see, man, I don't want to keep doing my boys like this. Like, I keep, you feel me? Like I'm the best. Like, I'm the better, the best shooter. You okay, feel me? Mm -hmm. I can say that. Like you feel me? Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep throwing out there that I beat Skilla and Baby Money for ten thousand. I don't want to say that. Like I don't want to keep you saying. You don't want to say it. Uh, but they like they got game though. I feel I. I gotta give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just give it to me, man. <laughs> nah, what cracks me up is how y'all eyes light up when y'all talk about basketball. Yeah, at least I ain't ever talked to Skiller, but baby, yeah. money definitely side of baby. We bring up yeah. basketball. We all play like, basketball. <laughs> yeah, we all play eyes basketball. like y'all going to a different zone just For talking sure. about it. We all play basketball. That's what's up, man. Uh, so how you feel about the current state of um, Detroit hip hop? Like we're at a point now. It feel like everybody winning. I mean, it literally feels like everybody winning. Hundred percent. You know, everybody's you know levels is different in winning, but definitely everybody got some winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, like everybody, like uh, Chicago had their way. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, Atlanta had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's Detroit time. You feel me? Like people really fuck with Detroit music and damn near everywhere in the United States, a lot of in the world. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like. It's crazy, like it's really, like we literally like getting a million views in a, in a couple of weeks on yeah. videos, like that's insane. Like it's, it used to take me so long to get a million views, mm -hmm. now we get them it's like it's nothing. You know, so like, fuck with it. Do you think you take the, uh, you or, or your peers take the, uh, take the wins for granted? Because you wasn't part of that era that had to struggle in it, even like mm -hmm. going to 2010, you know, you know. But as long as you really been doing it, you kind of grew you started right at that surge, that ascension. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't never took the L's. So do you not appreciate it as much? You nah, know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Shit, that shit, that shit helped me feed my family. <laughs> feel me? Mm -hmm. but it's like, I do feel like, like, damn, like, people before us, like, they was so hard mm -hmm. and they ain't really get the recognition that they was supposed to get. You get what I'm saying? So like, that shit. It's, yeah, we gonna, we, gonna, we gonna do it for them. And then, like, I be trying my best to, like, remix, like, some of their songs mm -hmm. and shit just to bring a fresh sound to it and make the world, like, that we that we in now, like, get that feel that we used to get when we was younger. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. And y'all helping keeping people's legacy alive because, 100%. you know, people bring up Blade and, and, and Cheddar Boys. Sure. And street lords, sure. now nah, more than they did ever because y'all reference them. For sure. And you know, everybody wants to know who, you know, they want to know who inspired y'all, y'all listen to and to make them go back sure. and listen to them. Like, oh, 
Oh, sure. we get it now. We see the the lineage. We see the connection. So, sure. you know, that's that's what's up. So, what's on deck for the rest of the year? How many how many takes we got this year? We got a tour coming. What's what's going on in twenty twenty three? Everything. I hope mm-hmm. everything. I know I'm out, I'm out drop my deluxe. I'm out, and then I got that other tape going on after that. Mm-hmm. So after that, after we drop that, we're gonna see what's going on and see how see how you know see how everything doing. And I'm gonna be on tour this year. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say I hope. <laughs> I'm gonna be on tour. We're gonna you, be you doing it out there. Got to. Got, got you. to for sure. Any other entrepreneur endeavors you thinking about venturing into outside of uh, entertainment? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I gotta get super rich off this first. Okay. And then I'm, <laughs> and then I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna step into like, now what? Now what else? Now what am I gonna do with this money? You feel me? Gotcha. Like, I just wanna get super, super rich. Gotcha. Off this shit. You a father yet? Yeah, I got a son. He three. Oh, that's what's up. Congratulations Thank on you, that, bro. Uh, okay. How has fatherhood affected uh, your journey in music? Um, it helped it. Hmm. Like, you know, you don't want to, this the way I eat, so mm-hmm. you don't want to, like, if I ain't eating, you know what I'm saying, like, how we going, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. live a good life. Like, I really, like, go hard so I can give him, like, the best life possible legally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know, like, my pops was going to have to go to jail, but I would hate for my I, me to go to jail, mm-hmm. from, from, you know what I'm saying, my mm-hmm. son. Like, I'm his best, like, how my pops my best friend, mm-hmm. I'm his best friend. You feel me? Like that's he dope. act like like he sit up under me all day long. Mm-hmm. So like that's really what it is. So. That's dope, man. So. All right, Ted B. Uh, I'm good. I'm sure. good. I appreciate your time. Appreciate it. And you, that bro. concludes off the six podcast with Street Lord Radio. Yes, sir. Uh, hit the button. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Peace out. Yes, sir.